The uh, bills that have been explained here, the Senate Seward's bill would increase penalties for fraud. Senator uh, Dean Skellis' bill would take the runners, the guys that coordinate these, put these events together, uh, make it a felony and put these people in jail. But the chutzpah is, the bill that I have, actually allows these individuals uh, fraudulent checks and credit cards. And we as a state pay. If they take the policy out with a fraudulent check or a fraudulent credit card, we as a state pay up to $50,000 to each one of these individuals that are part of this staged operation. You can have 10 or 15 or 20 people involved in one of these staged operations. We have here representing Cy Vance, the District Attorney of New York City, Dan Alonzo, the Chief Assistant DA of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Thank you, Senator Golden. Thank you, Senator Skelos. <coughs> uh, just to clarify, Cy Vance is the uh, District Attorney of the County of New York of Manhattan. There are four other DAs in the, in the city of New York. Uh, I am here on behalf of District Attorney Vance, <coughs> who has made it a priority for his office, our office, to go after fraud in the healthcare industry in general, and particularly no-fault fraud, which costs ratepayers, as you heard, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not more, uh, in New York every year. Um, I too want to want to commend uh, the Senate, especially Senator Skello, Senator Seward, and Senator Golden um, for their leadership. We look forward on a bipartisan basis to working with the Assembly and the Senate to uh, uh, to hopefully craft legislation that will attack this problem. I just want to leave you with one one issue, which is most important to us. Um, Cybans is all about crime prevention, um, and Senator Golden's bill about. Uh, not paying for uh, claims based on policies procured through fraudulent, fraudulent checks and credit cards, that's a crime prevention measure. That's a great idea. The runner bill, um, a runner bill that is ideal for the state, which dries up the supply of patients, would do more to prevent fraud than any other provision. We can prosecute fraud. We do that today. We do it all the time. But imagine if instead of waiting until the fraud is committed, we could actually criminalize the payment for patients. Legitimate doctors don't have to pay for patients. Legitimate lawyers don't have to pay for patients. Um, we should make it a felony today to pay for patients to take away the incentive to commit fraud. I assure you those uh, folks who, uh, those criminals who staged the accident um, that took the life of the 71-year-old woman that we just heard about uh, were being paid uh, per head for every patient they delivered to those clinics. Take away that incentive, and you take away this problem of no-fault fraud, or at least greatly minimize it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd also like to introduce uh, Attorney Will McGoldrick. He, uh, Bill, is a provided representation to auto and health care carriers in defense of fraudulent claim claims since 1984. In addition, his experience as a retired sergeant from the New York State Police uniquely qualifies him to discuss with the, the, us the auto fraud investigation. Bill? Thank you, Senators Golden, Skelos, and Seward. I'd like to emphasize something. Uh, there's nothing accidental about a staged accident. They're very carefully planned, um, very sophisticated. Uh, the people involved are professional criminals. They get up every day to go and stage an accident. Uh, the runners are working hard to find uh, new passengers for the cars. Um, these people do this with callous disregard for serious physical, for the, of the risk of serious physical injury and death uh, that may occur and has occurred uh, to innocent motorists. I urge the Assembly uh, to pass this legislation. It's all right on point and will go a long way uh, to mitigating uh, this terrible situation. Thank you. Why don't we stay? Do you have any questions on this issue? Well, on, the, on the first bill, it says here it's a crime to stage a, a intent to commit fraud, but isn't that against the law anyway if you're, do, if you're intending to do a, a fraud? I mean, what, what's the, what would be the difference? Well, our uh, I mean, uh, insurance fraud is, is, a, is uh, against the law, uh, no question. Our bills are directed at uh, uh, creating some new specific new crimes in, 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 in the law. Uh, to, to act as a runner, a center skeletal is still mine in terms of specifically staging an accident. Generally, uh, what happens now, and there have, some people have been prosecuted for this activity, but you have to uh, do it in a convoluted way. We want to uh, go right at uh, some of the specific activity that's happening out there, staging an accident, making that a, a crime, 
a felony level crime, as well as uh, the runners. And as Senator Golden points out, it should be a no-brainer if you purchase a policy uh, with a, a fraudulent uh, check or a stolen credit card for the purpose of, uh, of uh, uh, perpetrating cr uh, fraud, they should, we shouldn't have to pay those benefits. I mean, it, that should be a no-brainer. So what we're doing under these bills is, is making the law much more specific to attack specific criminal activity, what we consider criminal activity, uh, taking place today, which is uh, skyrocketing the fraud costs. Yeah, the, the other thing that's important about increasing the penalties, and I've had the opportunity to uh, speak with some district attorneys and assistant district attorneys in the past, um, there's a reward risk, risk thing when you're looking to commit a crime. Um, and there's also district attorneys with their limited resources has to have to make decisions as to what criminal activities they're going to prosecute. Uh, if you're a criminal and the level of the crime is not a felony and you can plead down to next to nothing, uh, the reward, reward factor is there. Uh, if you're a district attorney with limited resources, uh, many times you cannot go after this growing group of people uh, because the crime level is so low. So again, you know, many criminals weigh the reward of committing the crime and the risk they face if they're caught. And that's why this legislation is so important that we make it felonies to participate in these types of activities. There's a, in the first paragraph estimates a billion dollars a year cost from insurance fraud, and I believe the, the number cited by much money was 385 million in 2010 was a different system. Well, the, um, uh, there, there are various uh, estimates out there. Uh, obviously, there, there's the no-fault uh, portion uh, of the auto policy, uh, and then there's other, uh, uh, the other parts of the insurance uh, uh, bill as well. So um, <coughs> also we're talking about actually an extent of the Medicaid as well. So uh, that's, the, when, you talk, when you boil down the numbers on a per-driver basis, in some parts of the city, as Senator Golden said, $1,000 more per uh, policy, per driver. Uh, upstate, it's, um, it's uh, closer to over $100 in the upstate region. Uh, but the bottom line is New Yorkers are paying far more for their auto insurance than they need to because of this fraud. Okay, what I'm questioning is the basis for the billion dollars. Where did that come from? That is a national statistic, the billion dollars on the no-fault insurance. In New York City and New York State, the number is around $300 million. <coughs> the insurance company cost New York was more than a billion, so it's $300 million. That was a, that's a error. It's a billion dollars, a, a national statistic. Uh, also, in, Mr. Golden, your bill uh, would allow cancellation of a policy after an accident. Would the only basis for canceling a policy be a bad check or stolen credit card? Yes. That's it? Yes. Those would be the only reasons. Any other questions on this issue? Uh, yeah, the, uh, you mentioned some sentence times, seven years for a uh, uh, Senator Sewer's bill and uh, four years for uh, your bill. Uh, what's, what is the current sentence, maximum sentences? Uh, when people are the prosecuted under fraud laws or, or yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the problem is that these, these bills create new laws, so it's not you have to sort of analogize. So the current penalty for fraud is if you present a fraudulent claim uh, that is over a thousand dollars, that's up to four years. If it's over three thousand dollars, that's up to seven years. If it's over fifty thousand dollars, that's up to fifteen years. And if it's over a million, that's up to twenty-five years. Those are indeterminate sentences, like eight and a third to 25, you've heard that. Um, so those are the penalties for fraud. These, these, these would be brand new laws, so you'd have to analogize. So the runner payment under this bill would be a class E felony, which is punishable up to four years in the United State prison. Mr. Lanza, what's the status of this New York City case cited here with three dozen people, and how many doctors? This is the one from February? Yes. That's a federal case. Um, okay. That case, look, look, that case I don't know a lot about because it's done by the U.S. Attorney. I will tell you that it's remarkable only in the amount of money. I mean, it's a lot of money. 
270 plus million dollars, but it's not remarkable, it's not new in terms of the cases that we've been doing year in and year out for probably 15 years or, or more. Um, someone be charged under both, I would say in the, the staging accident could be charged under both the, the existing fraud laws and this as well? If the staging accident bill became law, you could be charged under both assuming that we met the elements of the other crimes which, which, which involve presenting a claim to an insurance company for insurance fraud, getting money for larceny. I mean, all these, all these existing laws on the books have different elements. As Senator Seward said, his staging bill would get it at the root, at the staging uh, part, with the intent to commit fraud without having to go through it. With the, with the, the runner law, is that, are you all currently able to prosecute runners under different? No, I mean, oh, only only if we can <coughs> prove that they are conspiring or part of a fraud organization. So, so this makes it easier to prosecute? It makes it easier to prosecute them, but it also allows us to prosecute them for what they do. The runners don't care whether the patients are really hurt or not really hurt, if they get them on the street, if they get them from a staged accident, if they get them from a real accident but they're not hurt. They don't care about any of that. All they care about is that they can find people on the street who are willing to go to the clinic for therapy and they can get their 1500 bucks. That's all the runners care about. We propose to criminalize that with the, uh, with the satisfaction. And you know, again, and this is what I don't understand with, with the assembly not passing this legislation, uh, we're, we're not talking about uh, legitimate plaintiffs, lawyers, who uh, go after certain uh, types of negligence and malpractice. Uh, we're not talking about legitimate doctors. Uh, we're talking about, uh, and I can say this as a lawyer, uh, a lawyer who doesn't deserve to be an attorney for committing these types of crimes. And if you talk to, and I've done this with a number of uh, attorneys, also from the plaintiff's bar, uh, prior lawyers who have indicated to me they have no problem with this legislation because what they do is legitimate legal work and uh, certainly doctors have uh, no objection uh, to these types of uh, doctors being prosecuted uh, because they have enough patients and they don't need to deal with this type of uh, crime. Want to go on to uh, other questions? I have any idea why the assembly has it? Any idea why the assembly has not moved on this? You have to ask the speaker. There is the, that billion dollar number that we spoke of. When you put in the Medicaid fraud that is associated with the insurance fraud, it's costing the state of New York the uh, billion dollars. The billion dollar number that I use that is a no fault is a no fault number that is a national number. But the New York number is based on the 300 million on fraud and the Medicaid fraud that is associated to it. 